Hi, we're here at the first LEGO League robotics competition and we are super excited. Mount Vernon bots are in the house and we are ready to take on this challenge. So all of you are part of a huge movement in FIRST. You guys are building for the future using science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Well, we call it STEM as well. So working together is awesome. And like honestly, what can be better than working as a team to build for towards the future? This tournament is run by a robotics team just like you. Granted, we work on bigger robots, but most of us were in FLL. In fact, some of us have even participated in this tournament in the past. But now, instead of just participating in FLL, we are now able to give back. We are trying to spread the joy of FIRST and robotics to all of you. But you can do something too. There's much potential for you to spread the concepts and love of robotics of FIRST in your community as you all grow as teams for this season and future seasons. So quickly, let's give a big round of applause to over 30 volunteers we have at this event. The support of the Chakwa Central School District has been second to none. They open their schools for hours of code, STEM Fest, and now our third FLL tournament. Josh Block has been a big advocate for us. Many teachers have called to ask what they can help do to help us. So I'm very happy to introduce to you all uh, Paul Bianchi. He is a physics teacher at Forest Greeley High School here in Chappaqua, New York. So without further ado, here you go. Thank you. So on behalf of the Chapel Schools, I want to welcome you to the Bell School this morning. Thank you all for coming. Um, and as he said, I'm a physics teacher and a makerspace teacher over at the high school here in Chappaqua. And I've been a Lego fan for about 50 years. And the best part of my summer vacation last year was I built the Lego Saturn V model. Have you seen it? It's very, very cool. It's sitting on my desk over in the classroom. Um, beautiful model. But what you guys brought today is so much more impressive than just a model because you're using Lego to do stuff. You're using Lego to solve problems and that's really, really impressive. And I wanna tell you a little story. I, over the weekend I was listening to a podcast by 
a famous historian called Neil Ferguson. He just wrote a book, and he's talking about his book. And in his book, he says, we live in a really special time in history right now. He said, there's a lot, a lot of things are changing very rapidly, and it's kind of freaking people out. Politics is not like it was a little while ago. The economy, business is not like it was. The way people talk to each other is not like it was. And he said, if you look at the news, a lot of reporters are writing about this, and they're trying to find other times in history that were like this so we could learn from them. And he said, a lot of reporters are saying, oh, it's like the 1930s. You know, there's saying like the 1920s. And he said, no, you gotta go way further back. He said, you know what 2019 is like? 2019 is like 1500. It's like 500 years ago. Because all the change that's happening now is like a lot of change that was happening then in Europe because of an invention. Anybody know what famous invention was invented? Around 1400s, 1500. Yeah. Telescope was what, a little bit later. Not like we think of robots today. They had some mechanical kinds of robots, but not pro not programmable ones. Somebody said printing press. 1400s. A little late. <laughs> That's probably, I'm coming to that. Hang on to that idea. The printing press was a way to print books really cheaper and faster than they could be. Back in 1500, most people in the world did not know how to read or write. So if you didn't know how to read or write, how did you learn stuff? You only learned from the people you knew. So you learned what your parents knew, or what your friends knew, but that's about all. And stuff didn't change much because of that. And then with the printing press, when books became cheap and more people could get them, people learned how to read. And when they learned how to read, they could suddenly do stuff that their parents and their friends couldn't do. You could learn from people you didn't know. And that was huge. And what Dr. Ferguson was saying was, we have an invention today that kind of did the same thing on steroids. About 25 years ago, your parents went out and bought something and brought it into the house. What big invention did people start bringing into their homes? The computer. The computer. <laughs> and not just a laptop, and not just the computer, but what it was connected to. And then about, yeah. yeah. You. The internet. And then about 10 years ago, this happened. It's a phone, but it's not just a phone. What else is this? iPhone X. I'm not an Apple person, sorry. What is a smartphone? It's not just a phone, it's also a. Samsung. advertisers out here. This is a computer that's in your pocket. And this computer is connected to the internet. And it's in your pocket and it's with you all the time. So, not only can I talk to anybody in the world basically right now, not only can I get any information almost that I want right now, the printing press just gave you a book. This is every book ever written, and it's in my pocket. And that really changed things. And it also really freaked people out, because it's so powerful that it started changing things really, really fast, and we don't really understand where it's going. And most people in the world are freaked out by things they don't understand, and people don't understand this. Because this is a piece of electronics, and it's a lot of computer programming, and it's connected not just to other people and computers, but it's connected to stuff. I can tell my smart speaker what to play. I can order my groceries and have them delivered to my phone with this. I can change the temperature in my apartment. I can start my car. This is connected to machinery. 
that's a really powerful thing, and most people do not know how that works, and that's scary to them. You know how that works. Exactly. Because you're doing it. You're learning how to write code. You're learning how to build machinery and put those things together. And that is really, really powerful. And so as you learn to become the next scientists and engineers and programmers, you're deciding where this goes. And that's a really big deal. So you're going to have a great time today. Good luck. So Chappaqua is also very receptive to robotics teams. Um, many FLL projects have actually started here and reached out to many other towns. And Chappaqua has pushed them and responded to them very enthusiastically. Now please rise for the singing of the National Anthem. And uh, anyone who wants to sing along, please feel free. Possibilities and challenges. New things. My core value is teamwork, and it's like a 
about how to work together to how to work together. <laughs> how to work together to solve and to solve and discover things. My core value is also teamwork. The core value of teamwork means that you this are you're just here for fun. Don't encourage, don't discourage because sometimes you might do something wrong and we learn from each other's mistakes and build ideas to form one big solution. My core value is impact and and um, impact you have to use critical thinking to solve problems. My core value is innovation and innovation means that you, you can find a ways to experiment, experiment new challenges like finding what's in space and all other planets and experience, experimenting new work. My core value of teamwork and teamwork is like sharing each other's ideas to make one big and better solution. My core value was inclusion. And inclusion would mean like none of us small bird and blocks would feel left out. And we also used our tigers, our motto, so no one like so we can give each other a boost. Values also fun. So fun. Well, the fun to us is about for robotics is building the robots, programming them, encouraging, encouraging one another, um, like um, la laugh, laughing, and giving each other high fives and supporting each other. Can you talk about how you used teamwork to create your poster? We use teamwork because um, we had lots of ideas we wanted to do, and um, but then Miss White said, "How about we just put all our ideas together to solve space debris?" And that's how we use teamwork. How did your team decide what they're going to pursue? How are they going to work together? How are they going to come up with their ideas? We came up with the idea because we were looking over some like things to do for, and we saw a space debris and we thought it was the most challenging and we wanted to do it. So you guys have a pretty solid team, right? Nine of you. So when you guys met to make your decisions, how did you organize yourselves? And did you did you organize yourselves? Did your parents and coaches help you do that? How did you do that? We did it by sometimes our parents <coughs> helped us by being a for build with coax and programming to see if anything would work to see if things would work or if they won't work. ever saw something happening to another like when you were working together if you saw something happening that you thought, thought was not fair to the other team person what, did you do anything about it did you come across anything like that we would like we would help that person to we would help that person make it fair for them do you have something and sometimes when they wouldn't get it we would take our time and we will help them. Very good. What was the most surprising thing you learned about yourself being part of this team? How many good ideas we all have. Like, you know, like some of us can be like very quiet like during class, but when they come here, everyone gets a chance to express themselves. Anybody else? The most surprising thing you learned about yourself being part of this team? The most surprising thing that I learned in this robotic team like sometimes like when like because I really like math and like you can create your like you can use your math skills to help you um and well like build and see what sizes fit other sizes 
So can you tell me about one thing that each one of you contributed towards this team? Like to the project, to, to working together. Just go around and tell me one thing that each one of you worked on. Important. Go ahead. The, like the different ideas all of us had. So like on this team, was there anything in particular you worked on? Space jump. Okay. I worked on space jump too. Like the like the building or the, the programming. What did you do? The project. The project. Okay. The project. Yeah. Project. Programming. And who did the poster? I think I missed you. What did you work on? Project. Project. And who did the poster? Me. Well, we all put our ideas on the poster. Very good. And you took ownership of the poster, like putting it well, together? Well, I helped with, to like put our stuff, like the stuff that we thought of. Well, we had all the ideas and I helped put it on the poster. That's very nice. Can you give us an example, anyone, of how you used one of the core values outside of the team, outside of being part of this team? Because we always have fun working together. Because we always use teamwork to, to, um, to, help, to help us do something. We always use innovation to help, like, if something didn't work, we would try to find new ways to we would always try to include people who don't like, like out of the picture. So how many of you had any experience with uh, Lego or robotics or programming before, before this? I have. You have? I have. You do too? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. For most of you, it was the first time. Excellent. How did you like it? Awesome. Would you do it again? Yes. 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 two minutes. What are you most proud of? Our robots. Yeah. Your robots? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and coming and our fellow friends. We Everyone. And how are I? Because of the attachments that we were able to make and find just the right speed, angles, and stuff for our robot. And how our ideas came together to make this great. I'm proud of like the discovery we made and how much we learned. I'm proud of everyone. <laughs> what about you? Um, what are you most proud of? I'm proud of like how the end result of everything. Did all of you know each other before you? Join this team? Yes. Two two groups kinda came together. Yeah. <laughs> so now do you feel like a team? When you see each other in the corridors, do you say, Yay, go, go Mount William Bot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Have you guys seen others who are not in the team who say, Man, I want to be part of this team next year? Yes. Yes. yes, yes, a lot. <laughs> Great. Are we on time? All right. All right. Okay. Anything else you guys want to tell us? We, um, Forgot to. Space move. junk can really like harm. It's very dangerous up in space because say like a astronaut was walking taking data, it can just like like space junk can just come at it and hurt it and like fly. Space junk could all, also like damage satellites that are working or make more space. Junk. <laughs> it's true. Your time's up. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Great job, guys. Great, Great job. job. Great. All right, everyone, seats ready. We're going to get started here in three, two, one, go. Two minutes remaining, two minutes. I don't hear anyone 
cheering for their team. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and that's the match. Kaden and we are the Mount Vernon bots. Today we're going to be showing, um, we call it Space Ram. While running this, you can also explain about your robot so that you can. Save yeah. Now we're going to perform I Love Robots and Legos. Last, we're going to perform spin a lock. Okay, so are those the three missions that you wanted to show us today? Yes. Um, Great, fantastic. Can someone talk about the robot in general? Like, what is it made of? What are the motors? What are the sensors? Or any, any, any How the, do the general it? structure of the robot? Um, so first off, um, this is like a little guard. So when, if it hits anything, it won't break apart. This was a... Oh, and at the bottom, we have a color sensor for it not to hit any other missions. And on <coughs> right there, under that ball right there, it helps the it helps the motor. I mean the robot. Go. And the lever on the robot. Uh, at mm -hmm. this part right here, this part helps us lift the ramp over there. And this part here, when it's driving here, it helps it, pr it protects the robot from, from breaking what, just in case it hits against the wall. The side bars. Fantastic. Awesome. And, uh, how, how did you guys decide which missions you wanted to do? 
um, we look um, at other um, competition on YouTube, and we saw the most challenging ones, which were these three. How did you go about doing the program? <coughs> uh, how did you go about doing the programming? Who did it? Or did you split it between yourself? Um, we split it. We split. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. <coughs> and was there any part of it that was more challenging than other parts? The space ramp. Yeah, the space, space ramp. Because um, the wheels on some of our carts, they, they wouldn't make it past this, so it would stop. And sometimes the robot wouldn't lift this too high. Yeah. Great. Um, so the piece of code you printed out here, um, which mission is this for? Do you guys know what mission that's for? Uh, I think this was the second one, which was this. Mm. Okay. Um, I see one thing you've done which is really awesome is you've written comments at the top of each of the of the um, of the different blocks. Mm -hmm. um, did you find? Did you do that while you were doing it or at the end? At the um, every while time we were doing it. Every time we finish a block, we wrote what was going on. Did you find that helpful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Especially in a big, especially in a big group, so you can communicate easily to each other. That's really, really good. So I'm very, very happy to see that. What's yeah. the hardest thing you did that you got that worked? Well, the hardest one was this one over here mm -hmm. because we we couldn't find out how to get it just in the orange. So sometimes it would go too far and sometimes too little. So how did you change things up to try and? Um, we we changed the speed. And the uh, um, power. Power. Yes, power. So it wouldn't go all the way over or too far. I mean, mm -hmm. not, yeah, too little. It would just go exactly on the oil engine. Uh huh, because if the speed goes fast, <coughs> the power is fat and strong. But if it goes low, if the speed is low, the power is like, is low, low. Too, too. But if it's at uh, just the right amount, the speed is okay, and the power will drop it right into the orange. Right. So if I give you seven more days, hmm? uh, which mission or what part of the programming you you would like Pardon to do? Pardon? Yeah, if you if I give you seven more days to work on this uh, your robot and the programs, what part of the mission or program you'll do and why? <coughs> Space ran because while we were in the competition, right here kept on going closer to the wheel, and that it wouldn't work properly. Um, I'm guessing at the very beginning of this process, you had a relatively simple robot, and then you started to modify it and change it. Can you talk about some some? some part of that process, what was one change that's quite significant, where at the beginning it was like this, and then the end, after learning something, you change your robot in some way? Um, at first, we had like a different, um, the flipper, and then it wouldn't like lift it up as far, so then we switched it to that. When you say a different flipper, what do you mean? It was like, like longer. Oh, it was longer. It, it, was long, okay. it, was, it was like this piece. Okay. But, but kept problem. on getting stuck. So, and then we found out this cut is more effective. That's why it works right now. Because it would lift up all of it. And, and we only want the top of it to lift up. And our other robot, we made it the same as this one. So we could use one robot for programming and one to build on for modifications. And why did you do that? Um, because some of the missions were weren't working well with those parts. Okay, and and how did you solve this problem? Like, uh, uh, apart from time, like uh, saving time in terms of programming, what are the other things you got advantage because of two robots? Well, some of the parts weren't allowing the robots to move. Okay. And some of them were just were too high and some were too low. So they couldn't do the missions as well. Uh, what, how many attachments you have designed so far? Hmm? How many attachments to your robot? Um, how many different attachments you? It only has one right. One now. attachment. Okay. 
and um, uh, <coughs> what are the what is what is the what 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 mission that attachment does very well and uh, what else you you would plan to do with, with that attachment you have only one attachment right you have only one attachment right yes, yes it seems okay. like they just the, the robot is like this oh okay the, the, you don't add anything onto this robot yeah. during oh the okay okay i see oh. so is this your first season doing this yeah. yes so you've, you've gone through a whole experience yeah. yes. you've you know all the ups and downs is there anything you learned that if hopefully I'm hoping you all try and do this again in the future and that you've enjoyed this experience, like if you after after this term and you go home and you're like oh my gosh next year we've so got to do more and better. Yeah, I know more and better, but I'd love like you've probably seen a lot of cool things. Is there something you say hey I really really love to put this stuff in our robot? Do you guys um, have any ideas? Well, I was thinking well, that we could like um make more missions mm -hmm. and then program our robot to do them, mm -hmm. but make sure that that we have just the right amount of missions so we don't waste time. Yeah, maybe I was thinking we could make like a little ledge and it'll be able to flip, flip that all the way to the top. Okay. Like a little like, like it would be like, Orange. it wouldn't be like a hammer, but it would be like wheels so it could pound it all the way to the top. So you learned that today? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Well, guys, thank you so much, and uh, we wish you all the best success, and I do hope this is your first of many seasons, because you've got a great start, and I look forward to seeing you in future events. Thanks thank, so much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hello. My name is Christian Harney, and we're the Mount Vernon Bots. Today, we're going to be showing you a solution to um, space debris. The reason that space debris is bad because if an astronaut if an astronaut is in space, it can get hit by space junk. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to show a small presentation about what we want to do to solve space junk. I'm Earth. I'm fish junk. 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 Space Jump travels around Earth 17,500 miles per hour. Master, master. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. One reason Space Jump is harmful is because if an astronaut is walking around taking on data during a spacewalk, Space Jump could hit him and injure him or her and knock it for him or her far away. <laughs> the solution of solving that problem is that there will be a satellite that contains a camera, a net, and a motor in the back. And, and, the, and the satellite will just move around Earth, and when it spots space junk, it will send out its net and lower it down to Earth. Oh, I see space debris with my, with my camera. I better send the net. Oh. And when it enters the atmosphere, it will bring to eye. So the net captures the space junk. Yes. How does it then get it directed back towards they Earth? Send it, they, it falls down and, and it then burns to ash. Basically, they just drop it. Yeah. Yes, and it drops so it's the space junk. Turning the orbit of the, the, of the space. The jet also has like a magnet at the end to it so it could close. Because if it, if it can't close, it will go back away. And when it burns to ash, nobody will get hurt because 
when it enters the Earth's atmosphere, it burns up and it goes to ash, so nobody will get hurt from the space shuttle. A fifth idea, a fifth idea was to use magnet, but then so, some of the big items in space, some of them won't connect to the magnets, so it wouldn't work. We also recognize that since we want to shoot the magnet at the space show, we recognize that if we if we send it to the space show, it will break up into more pieces and make more. How, how does the net recognize this, that it's junk? Mm -hmm. Some country might say, "Oh, it's my stuff. Don't do anything with it." Yeah. Okay. How do you know? How do you know that it's junk? We would know that it's junk because it would just be floating around Earth. Yeah. Anything floating around in space is considered space junk. And plus there's like a little like uh, device and it can sense if it's just like something else or it's actually space junk. So then the satellite could shoot them there, catch it, catch it in the space junk and burn it to ash. Do you have an idea of what they do today? Um, we did some research. They don't do it as, they don't do it as we speak. But we're hoping that they do do it one day. So there's nothing going on at this point about that? Well, there is space junk roaming around space no, right no, now. But, but nobody's capturing it or yeah, no, And astronauts are getting hurt. Yeah. Did you talk to people about your solution and give, tell them about your idea? Who did you speak with and what did they, what did they say? Well, we spoke to our coaches and they asked questions about, um, about our performance as well as you did. Did you reach out to anybody in the NASA or a space lab or any of those no. people? No. No, we kind of just Did you formed it. present it in your school to other schools? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we um, had it in our own little place to do it. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Good job. Hopefully we get rid of the space junk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A big thank you, a big thanks to First. Um, also, uh, many companies that comprise the New York Tech Valley, um, big ones include Z, uh, GE, Time Warner, um, and PDF Solutions. All of them are sponsors of events like these, so big round of applause to them. We would also like to thank IBM. Um, my coach actually works with them, and, um, and the head referee, along with many of your parents, also work for IBM. So a big shout out and thank you to them. Another one is to the Chappaqua School District. Um, we would like to thank them for letting us host our event here. Um, the custodian staff who cleaned up last night and this morning, and this morning and tonight after you all leave. Uh, really big, uh, gracious uh, um, step that they make for us, so huge shout out to them. And our guest speaker that spoke this morning, Paul Bianchi. Um, I'm not sure if he's here now, but uh, that was a great speech he gave to open our great day of robotics. So as many of you know, this event was run by a robotics team just like many of yours. Um, we are called Robocracy. Uh, we compete in the First Tech Challenge, which is a step up from FOL. Um, high school students, middle and high school students who come together and compete with robotics just more than just Legos. Um, but we live by and compete for the same ideas that you all compete for. Pushing for more, uh, striving for more success and in innovation in the world and also those two terms, gracious professionalism and cooperation. So I would like to thank all the volunteers, referees, judges. Um, the judges will be coming in a sec, so yeah, referees. And a special thank you to our head referee. Uh, would you like any words? Of course, I think hopefully you all had a, uh, had a blast. Um, the only thing I can say is I, I work in the tech field and people ask me, you know, what do you do? And I say, I have fun. And they say, you know, I ask them what is better than having fun. 
and they'll say typically sleep. Uh, and and I, my answer would be to be paid to have fun. So I hope you all grow up to be enjoying what you do and technology is the foundation. Thank you. So at this time, we'd like to invite all the teams to come up and accept their uh, participation medals. So we will start with Junior FLL. So the first team I'd like to invite up is the Moon Raiders. All right, the second team we would like to invite up, uh, Moon Messenger. Please, the Greenville Space Rangers. All right, so um, now we'll move on to FLL teams. Uh, the first one we'd like to recognize, Yes Two.
right, so without further ado, I would like to introduce the head judge of this tournament, Sasuke Duri.
did that one? Yeah. Wow. That oh, was what, fantastic. Our team name is Blue Messenger. Messenger. Oh. And what grade are you guys in? Uh, first grade. My name is Caden, and I am at the first LEGO League Robotics Tournament. Yes, I am having fun. Our robots are having it a bit of difficulty, but they're doing good. Do you think you're going to win today's competition? I don't know. We'll try. Even if we don't, we did our best to be here. Okay. and my experience from this trip we took today is that like I learned how I made new friends I experienced what it's like to try out new things and I got out of my frightened stage. Hi my name is Malachi and robotics is fun to a point where it's kind of difficult as well about later about space junk and space debris, how we could combat that with robots. We saw pictures where there was a garbage truck in space. And then I learned new things that made more friends. And then I can learn more things. Hello, my name's Christian Harney, and I experienced that robotics is just for fun. So what if you lose or anything? I came here importantly so I can have fun. And I don't care what anybody else thinks about me because I know the truth and what, what's important in my life and that's having fun. That's what the Mount Vernon bot say. Yo! So my name's Andre and I have best friends when I just learned about innovation and fun to do and stuff. Yeah, that's all. So, and one more thing, don't do it yet. All three kids might want to do it, so hey, KJ, you're next. Hi. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> my name's KJ, and my experience here was amazing. We got to go robots, the projects, and my sister made a play that we didn't use anymore, but it was fine. Well, now, why? Um, <laughs> and we even got to do programming. It was a very fun experience. And just named Audrey. And my experience here was like how many teams like how many teams really want to do this? Like not here for like all the food and stuff. Like actually want to try to win. And I actually like um, being around little kids because like they have something to look up to. Chase and I met new friends from other grades and I got to see what it was like to be in robots for, for other schools. Like the videos.